all right these are my everyday carry items for 2023 when i go out of the house i usually bring a backpack as well which has all kinds of other interesting stuff in it but i would say that's more for another video today it's more about what fits in my pockets and what i usually carry with me every single time and when these items are not in my pants i usually store them like right there easily accessible next to the door with like a little charging station and all my apple watch straps on display to choose what kind of strap i want for the day at like chest height as well so i would recommend something like that for your everyday carry items in this video i will go over these items from right pocket to left pocket starting with my phone which i usually carry in my right pocket like any other normal person. As you may be able to tell, this is the iPhone 12. I got this almost a year ago. So back then it was a two year old phone. Now it's three years old. But I would say with iPhones, you can afford to do this because iPhones usually get software updates for like six years or something. And they last a crazy long time. They hold their value really well. And generally speaking, they don't slow down. The iPhone 12 is the cheapest phone that got the whole squared redesign in 2020. Well, technically the 12 mini is cheaper, but the 12 mini has significant worse battery life so generally speaking i wouldn't recommend that phone however the 12 is like the sweet spot i believe it has the new nice oled screen it got 5g and it also was the first phone to receive magsafe and because the iphone 12 is so light and thin which i personally like attaching magsafe accessories like power banks is really nice with this phone because it's the general package is smaller the camera of the iphone 12 is also still amazing especially the 12 megapixel main camera produces some really nice photos and especially videos which is the reason I'm still sticking with iPhone for its very good video quality it doesn't have cinematic mode like the newer phones but I would say for a normal point-and-shoot camera this is still really good I would say the newer lens it got the wider angle lens isn't great on the iPhone 12 It's usable but it isn't as sharp as the main camera there are some improvements on the iPhone 12 Pro like the better wider angle lens and the matte texture on the back which I personally prefer but those are not really reasons to upgrade to the 12 Pro. What would be a good reason actually, I think, is for the storage. Because on the iPhone 12 Pro, you get 128 gigabytes by default. And on the 12, you just get 64. And I think 64 is just too small on the phone these days. And upgrading the regular iPhone 12 to 128 gigabytes, then you end up with the quite expensive iPhone 12 so then you might as well go for the 12 Pro but a refurbished or secondhand iPhone 12 nowadays you can definitely find under 500 euros or dollars so I think that is an insanely good deal as far as the case goes for my iPhone this is a ESR case ESR is a brand that makes quite affordable phone gadgets and cases and stands and whatnot and this is no exception of course it has seen better days because it's almost a year old but it's actually a great case it's the halo lock case which comes in like under 20 dollars I believe and it uses their Halo Lock, which is basically MagSafe. So it's a case that still works with all MagSafe accessories, but yeah, it protects my phone quite well from scratches. And the buttons to press is all quite satisfying, and it has the raised edges above the screen, so I don't really need a screen protector. And it also has the raised edges near the cameras to protect those lenses. And this case makes the texture on the back of the iPhone 12 also a bit more matte-like, like you get on the iPhone 12 Pro. So that's like a little added benefit. And this kickstand makes grabbing your phone out of your pocket also also a bit more easy by grabbing onto it which also applies for when you're trying to take pictures or videos in landscape mode it also is a bit more grippy when trying to hold the phone like that but there's also this little thing right here which actually has a purpose it's a kickstand that i attached myself on this phone which is actually also from esr and it is really really sturdy still so this way i can prop up my phone vertically or horizontally however i want i can also adjust it horizontally a bit which makes watching videos amazing or propping up your phone next to your laptop with work or just trying to show someone something it's quite a flex as well to just prop up your phone vertically to show them and i know esr makes cases with a kickstand like this integrated in the case itself but those don't work with magsafe and i wanted the best of both worlds so that's why i glued this kickstand on the case next up is the apple Watch Series 6. Now, I don't really have the best arguments for choosing the Series 6. Uh, I used to have the Series SE which I still think is the best budget option for most people. But I lost that model when I went cliff jumping on holiday and I jumped in the water wearing a third party strap on my Series SE. And so it detached from my wrist in the water and I couldn't find it back anymore. 
Now that I have the Series 6, the only big thing I'm noticing is the always on display, which I would say is worthy of an upgrade. I bought the Series 6 secondhand as well for almost the same price, I believe 180 euros. So for that, I would say the always on display is worth because I like to look at my watch without anyone noticing, like a quick glance. And with the Series SE, I had to do like an obvious movement like this for the display to turn on. And so with the regular Air 6, you don't have that. I have a couple of straps, but I usually alternate between a third party leather strap and the black strap that came with it and this is the strap with a lot of holes because it's a nike edition because that was what uh, was for sale back then and since this is the same size as the se i used to have 40 millimeters i can also use the strap of the se but actually i think the one with more holes the nike one is way better it's just more comfortable because it's well it's used for sports so it lets in a bit more air it feels a bit more comfortable around my wrist and then for when i want to match with a certain outfit or something i use the leather strap which has a rubber backside which is very comfortable in my left pocket is usually a power bank which in this case is the Isetchi 5000 milliamp hour power bank now this power bank is great because it can charge my phone via magsafe as well as airpods and other things that can wirelessly charge but it can also charge the apple watch and the newer generation airpods that can charge via the apple watch charger but that means i don't have to bring a separate charger for the apple watch i can just use this and it's also a credit card size now it is a bit too thick for my liking but that's probably because of the wireless charging ability and on the back side i attach some velcro which more on that later a great feature about this power bank which you usually find on more expensive power banks is pass-through charging which means i can charge my phone an apple watch and the power bank itself all at once with one cable and one charging brake now in practice most of the time when you have all three charging at the same time like that it doesn't really work it usually charges the power bank and the phone for example but i would say for the price that's already fine by me and if i want to be more efficient i just use a usb-c cable to charge any device wire in my left pocket as well i have my card holder now this is from a brand called figuretta which is by far my favorite brand because the feeling of the trigger thing and because of the feeling of the metal the build quality is very good now i did modify this wallet quite a bit because it comes with like a kind of like a black fabric surrounding but i actually bought a separate black pouch that you usually stuck with adhesive to your phone i stuck it to the metal itself so i have this thing to carry coins or whatever now on the back side i attached some more velcro which comes into place when i want to attach it to my power bank so this is why i only have to carry one thing for storing cards and coins and whatever but also to charge stuff and to just have an all-in-one package and the velcro on that power bank also has another purpose i used that velcro on that power bank to stick the power bank to what was previously a monitor arm but i detached the vesa attachment and put another piece of velcro on that metal too so i can attach that power bank to that monitor arm this way i have another way of storing the power bank but more importantly i can prop up my phone on the power bank to have it on eye level and also i can prop up my ipad on that same thing because i attached a magsafe ring on the back of my ipad and it works surprisingly well because the 11 inch ipad is quite light and so this way i can prop up my ipad next to my monitor for sidecar or for universal control this is a little hack for aesthetically placing the ipad next to your monitor that i found uh, which i probably talk about more in another video next up in my left pocket i have a key holder from orbit key which is quite a high-end brand i usually don't buy stuff from them because it's quite pricey but this one i got for as a gift and the build quality is very good it matches the leather strap on my apple watch quite nicely and uh, the silver one it matches my wallet so i'm quite happy it uses like a clever way to hold the keys together and get them out in a convenient way moreover i don't have the annoying sound of those dangling keys anymore this way the in charge 6 cable now this is a cable that is actually quite useful Useful, especially for micro usb purposes because i don't really have micro usb cables with me and there are still some odd devices like a kindle and that in my case that still use micro usb so this comes in clutch when using micro usb and lightning for that case because this has a lightning and micro usb connector in one as well as a usb c connector and a usb a connector so it's literally a swiss army knife of cables i often have this attached to my belt or in my backpack i used to have the in charge x which is a newer version of it which has the lightning micro usb on the the outside rather than the inside which is a lot more useful because usb-c cables i always have with me but unfortunately i lost a piece of that little useful cable at a festival somewhere 
I always have a longer USB-C and lightning cable in my backpack, but this is a very nice backup option. There's also a newer version of the InCharge X. It's a longer one and I am looking to get that one because it might replace all of the cables. Now, sometimes I use this. This is a lightning to USB-A cable that can be used as a bracelet. But when I moved or flexed my wrist a little bit, the bracelet usually fell off. So I don't really use it for that reason anymore. Now, this is not really a tech item, but it is certainly very handy. I recently bought it. It feels quite cheap, but it does the job. It's like a portable cologne spray and you can refill it with most perfumes you have at home. So I especially like that you don't need additional things to refill this like you need with some other things like this. You can also see how full the little capsule is and the silver does fit in nicely with the rest. Now I have a video in the past where I explained why I didn't think AirPods Pro are worth it. That was almost a year ago and I kind of did switch my mind about this. If you're willing to go for refurbished or secondhand AirPods Pro, I think they're definitely worth it. I think right now the original ones are a bit cheaper because the newer ones came out which have better sound quality, noise cancellation, transparency and like the case that can make a sound now with the newer ones when you lost it. It's very good but they're also crazy expensive. So the original ones are still worth it in my opinion and the original ones I do carry with me every single day. I have the MagSafe version so you can charge these ones with a MagSafe charger. I don't think that's worth it. I think that's a waste of money kind of it is fun to use it but it isn't really necessary from what i've heard and seen on reviews is that airpods usually have very good transparency mode compared to other earbuds and i can confirm because i think transparency mode is very important it's almost a bit underrated because i do want to hear like normally when i have the earbuds in my ear and people are talking and i still want to hear it normally so that is a big reason why i carry these airpods pros <laughs> anyway those are my 2023 everyday carry items I hope you've enjoyed and thank you for watching.